Today, uh, we will uh, deep dive into a very, very interesting uh, use case from Germany is DB Schenker. Uh, DB Schenker is a subsidiary of Deutsche Bahn. Uh, the company is uh, the logistics arm of Deutsche Bahn and has been acquired over than 20 years ago in 2002, if I'm not wrong. And we have the opportunity to, to discuss with Ronja Stoffregen. Ronja is uh, the head of global startup management at DB Schenk. Hi, Ronja. Hey, Alberto. Nice to see you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So, first of all, probably it might be good to provide our audience a bit of background of DB Schenk. Again, I say logistics, but probably there is a bit more to, to, to present or speaking you. I think you have a quite a, all this history as a company uh, and uh, behind a very, very interesting footprint on innovation. But let's start from from the company first. Yes, of course. So let me uh, take you on board of the story of uh, supply chain and transport of DB Schenker. So our headquarters is in Essen, Germany, and uh, we're operating on a global scale. Just last year, we celebrated our 150th birthday. And uh, what we do um, in our services are in four regions or in four uh, business units, which are uh, land transport and ocean. And then we have contract logistics. And um, as every big corporation, there are a lot of functional units supporting these activities. And do you have uh, a very, very, let's say, interesting, you know, also the size of the company Innovation Unit, if I'm not wrong, is called Global Ventures and Innovation, is led by Patrick Hoffman. What are the areas that currently, as Innovation Unit, uh, the Schenker is covering? Yes, I'm excited to sh uh, share more about this because um, I'm also very proud uh, being part of uh, the Global Ventures and Innovation um, Unit because we um, strive such a holistic innovation approach. So let me guide you through it. So first of all, um, we start with uh, insights and intelligence, uh, intelligence where we do strategic foresight, where we want to understand trends, understand which is just, let's say, a trend we need to be aware of and which of those trends that really need to be we need to be aware of and take our own actions um here my colleague Jacek is always happy to also share with you some trend reports if you're interested uh, in the in the future and then um we go on uh, with the enterprise lab um here my colleague nuri um is together with the fraunhofer institute working on um, yeah, projects called a terminal of the future. So we're aiming for technologies that are not yet embedded in, in real life scenarios, yet we want to truly understand if those technologies are coming or if they're just um, not applicable for operational terms on a daily basis. And then we go over to um, my stream, which would be the venture client arm. So here together with Sebastian Schumann, it is our aim to collaborate with startups and become their customer. So what that means is um, we don't want to have any ownership of those companies, but really we want to um, yeah, start pilots, see if those technologies um, make any sense for our daily operations. And here the focus would be on the business units. Um, so we always try to have new technologies coming into our organization, um, but it can also be in the functional units. And um, I will deep dive into that probably in a minute, but let me go on with a view of um, all the streams of global ventures and innovation. And uh, then the next arm would be uh, going into the Schenker Venture World, where we have venture building and venture studio, where Tobias um, is guiding um, new building uh, activities where um, either we do it entrepreneurship or we do it entrepreneurship with um, entrepreneurs and residents um, with a uh, agency in Berlin. 
And lastly, no, two more. So then we have venture capital where Paulina is um, a yeah. scout startups where we're going into financial investments. Um, so she's happy to uh, give you more insights about that. And then last but not least, we have the su supply chain pioneers. Um, this basically builds a holistic overview into um, the customer centricity in all of our processes because um, it helps us to um, validate some hypotheses, but it would also um, get a like true pain points from the market to better understand um, yeah, what are the challenges for our customers and so we can adjust all of our other activities based on customer centricity approach. Very good. So. Uh... This is the whole picture in terms of the overall activity that has been run on the under innovation front by DB Schenker. You are in charge of the venture clienting, the venture client, meaning for, for the people who don't know it, partnering with startups in order to co-develop a solution on board innovation and put the innovation at the service of the company. So the, the company becomes the client of the startups and they start innovating together. So that's your, your field of action. If I'm not wrong, the venture clienting in Schenker started back in 2016 and you come on board uh, a bit more recently. Uh, before discussing that, I would like to, to deep dive a bit into your background. It's quite interesting. So what you've done before joining Schenker in 2021, two, what it was? What? 2021, yes. 2021, <laughs> yes. What you've done before Schenker, your life before Schenker, and then your life, your life after the movie Schenker. So. Yes, 100%. So, first of all, um, I am quite happy that uh, within my studies in the Netherlands and in Denmark, I got to meet so many inspiring people along the way. I did my bachelor's in business. Uh, international business, sorry, <laughs> and then my master's in finance and strategic management. And along the way, I got to be quite, um, got to attend quite a lot of uh, exchange semesters left and right. So um, shout out to everybody. Um, yeah, prospering their uh, trajectories themselves. It's really exciting to see everybody uh, doing their own turf and left and right getting impulses. So I'm really, really happy about my study period. Um, and then uh, after that, you would either go on the white on the black side, meaning you would either go on the consultancy side or you would go into investment banking. And uh, I had chosen the white side <laughs> where I went into a technical consultancy in Stuttgart and uh, there um, I did projects such as building up an innovation hub or um, helping with the digital product for a um, yeah for in the in the in the trucking industry so it was it was already a good start um, however um, very fast we realized together with two colleagues uh, Lana and Mika that um, there's a need for a company builder and back then the the position of venture architect was quite newly and um, yeah, long story short, uh, the three of us uh, founded in 2018 the company builder Akita Flux, which uh, had a focus on healthcare, um, transport and logistics and mobility. So what we did um, while well, I was there for three years was building innovation hubs, um, building venture capital arms, building um, new digital products for our corporate and SMEs partners. And um, also having some some interesting uh, ventures left and right ourselves where we would build an accelerator or we would build um, an innovation hub in the heart of Stuttgart. So there's a lot more to tell, um, maybe at a, at a beer or two. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then later I realized um, or I applied for the um, VAU, WHU University in, uh, in Falenda for a PhD. Um, for an excellent PhD position, and I got to know Dries um, Fames as my uh, supervisor. And then in 2021, I started my PhD trajectory with a research focus on where and how startups pivot their business model. Because just to give you a little bit more color on this, everybody, like I've been in all three positions, right? I've been talking um, as a founder, talking about, okay, what do we need to change? I've been in the corporate position where we think, okay, this is a nice product, but maybe we need to change the business model. And I've been on the investor side where we also said, hey, guys, we need to uh, look at our measurements and KPIs. And everybody always talks about, yeah, we have to pivot our business model. And even sometimes people brag about it, but yet nobody really says, what is the pivot? And um, 
So what I came here, so since 2015, since I'm in the startup world, it would always come around like, okay, we have to pivot our business model. And I'm like, is this a good thing? Like, and uh, so I um, made my own job to focus my research topic about when and how startups pivot, the definitions of pivots, and also what, what are the impacts in, um, on performance factors. Um, so I'm, I'm still in the middle uh, of it, but it's a, it's a, I call it, it's my privileged hobby uh, for some weekends. And so um, this was also the time where I realized that I wanted to go further into the implementation and scaling of business models and startups. And that basically led to one another that I said, okay, doing an external PhD, having your own company and focusing uh, left and right on projects um, that are having a you know re recurring circle. Um, is for me the time to move on it's to much, probably, yes. exactly yeah and it's a little bit much i must say but the good thing is my day has more than 24 hours um i'm, I'm not happy to share that with everybody but uh, luckily my day is a little longer than yours so i get done uh, quite a lot in my day no just kidding but this was the time where i then decided to uh, move over to the corporate side and uh yeah go from there and uh I think um, Schenker was already at a really good spot in terms of how they did um, innovation before. I had a um, I talked to Eric Wiersing uh, before, and he inspired me in terms of how he sees innovation, what is the anchor he has in the organization, and also his vision for all the global innovation activities. And for me, this was like the next right thing to do. And so I joined in uh, 2021. So 2021, uh, um, and then uh, I think you you brought your consulting and background and your energy into into this new venture clienting. Uh, can you share a bit uh, how a company like Didi Schenker approaches venture clienting, and uh, or maybe also give us some some numbers, some KPIs that we can use to compare. So. How does it work? How do you guys approach it? And then what has been your contribution or your experience to, to reshuffle a bit? Because again, we're talking about open innovation models, but at the end, uh, there are constantly evolving uh, contexts that cannot be crystallized in a specific way. Yes, today we talk about venture client, but the way we are talking, the model is still evolving, it's changing. So we do that for a living, supporting many companies. And, Every six months, there are changes. Every six months, we modify the approach because we see things that work, things that do no longer work. And so it's, it's a, an evolving uh, concept and model. So how, how, it, how it was and how it is today, the Bishanker uh, venture client, what is your unique approach, what you're doing that works, what you're doing that doesn't work, it needs to be changed, what is your experience here? Yes, as you say, it's a really, really dynamic um, approach. And we also always have to adjust it depending on not only the capabilities, the resources, but also let's call it what works and what doesn't work, right? Um, but maybe I'm taking uh, a step three before one. So um, back in 2016, there was a lot of startups approaching DB Schenker on multiple you know, uh, business units, but also countries. And so um, what happened back then was that Eric, um, I realized that there's a need for centralizing these activities. And so um, my, the team um, beforehand, um, before I came also along, did a fabulous job in like building a uh, process, centralizing the activities, also um, benchmarking certain ways. So by um, with my um, former um uh, former uh, Daria, who had my position before me, she she did a really good job in um, setting up a, a global uh, central process for startup management. Um, and then here also in brackets, the term venture clienting has just very recently uh, become very attractive. And even I still don't use it on my, uh, for instance, LinkedIn approach because it's just known in our bubble. And uh, if I want to talk to colleagues at DB Schenker and I tell them I'm doing venture clienting, half of the meeting will be done because I, I kind of need to ask and explain. So that's why. Um, I, 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 it's a good point. Again, the terms is becoming more widespread, but I think it's part of our internal jargon because most of the people say, want well, you clienting what? <laughs> so yes, that's yes. I, I mean, if you if, like. Say open innovation, what? 
So again, but most of the time we are so immersed in our own uh, uh, environment that we forget that other people have regular lives with regular understanding. And they, they don't give a shit about the way we define things. And we are micro parceling things that actually are broader and they do not understand. Sorry for yes. my friend. No, no, no. I um, I love it, and it's important that we don't um, that we are always connected to our operation and and uh, operation side, and so that's why it has to be somewhat straight to the point. So that's also why it's called head of global startup management because it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, anyway, so then um, in 2016 uh, we started collaborating and centralizing more of those startups that approached Schenker and said, "Hey, uh, we have this technology, we have this solution." Yaddy yaddy. And so we started to identify people in the organization that um, are keen to look into innovations, but also have, let's call it the right resources, capabilities, mindset, and also eagerness to put this on top of their daily operations. And so what started was for a couple of years, um, a setup of, we call it push approach, so that startups would come um, and move into or push themselves into the organization. So then um, the, the previous team would always, uh, so the startup management team would always uh, find, see the solution, identify it as relevant, and then find relevant stakeholders in the organization to push that technology into the organization. And that worked really, really well. And what it has achieved is that it um, created awareness, it created an ambassador network, it created um, people that truly not only believe in startup management and startup collaborations, but it would also um, foster uh, that it's not just, you know, innovation theater, but that we actually create impact. And you also asked me about some KPIs, and I'm going to deep, deep dive into that in a minute. But, you know, this was the beginning where we were able to prove that our activities is not just um, some youngsters having a cool job, but really creating impact for the organization. And so, um, it got more and more professionalized throughout the years. And um, and then, you know, things have been tried out like hackathons or, you know, um, it was also pre itself it presented the idea that we need something like a venture capital arm because um, we also did the first investments um, together with Deutsche Bahn and then realized, okay, we should have our own venture capital arm. We should build our own ventures. And so this was basically um, also pushing the idea of then Schenker Ventures, which was then um, started by Patrick Hoffman, and who is now um, leading the entire uh, global ventures and innovation um, unit. Um, okay, so but then when I when I came, and you kind of mentioned it before, Alberto, uh, the fact that I been consultant for good five years before, and um, I think it's. It's a little bit of a pain sometimes, but you can't let go when, once you've ever been a consultant to look at processes and products and either you want to make some more money or you want to save some money. Um, so maybe this is just uh, what, what you learn after a lot of business schools and consultancies. It's just wherever I go, even if I just buy a coffee at a store and it's like not working well, I'm already like, oh, OK, I need to change something. So that basically also happened at Schenker. And I must admit, I think it can also be quite exhausting uh, working with me because I, I mean, obviously I want to understand everything, but then when I see there's potential for changing things, then um, I also want to make sure that we um, create the biggest impact for Schenker. And uh, together with Eric, I had a perfect companion who understands and sees it and also helped me to, um, yeah, get those things as thoughts, those potentials to realize them in the real world. And the biggest thing I think now in the past few years, what we've changed is, for instance, um, we identified with a pull approach. So meaning that not just pushing startup solutions into the organization, we now um, try to focus on a pull approach, meaning we start at the organization defining strategic scouting fields, defining like coming from the digital strategy and then understanding where are the fields and products and processes that we can digitize and optimize with the help of startup solutions. So how can we pay into the digital strategy of DB Schenker? And then 
So we have uh, ongoing workshops with business and functional units to identify pain points. Um, I mean, here another whole session could be about what is a pain point, um, because it's it's not about um, building a new cloud infrastructure, and it's also also not about how to connect your monitor to your computer. So you know you have to kind of find the right balance um, within those two. Um, and then also um, we set up a new governance structure. So we have implemented innovation boards um, and this in combination helps us to not just do pilots for the sake of doing pilots with startups, but to actually um, like what's for me most important is once the pilot is implemented and the organization sees the value again, either by saving or making money. And, and then we go on and say, okay, now this pilot is gonna be implemented into our standard operations. And that is the point um, where I think this has been a success because we hit the nail upon uh, finding startups that really matter and that we're gonna last longer. And, um, so this is basically what we've done in the last two years, growing the team, um, also building the venture client community so we can learn left and right from it. Um, and uh, yeah, strengthening the positioning of Schenker, not only internally of Schenker, but also externally. But here's also something uh, to be announced soon, so stay tuned. Now give us some numbers again, also to, got to understand the size. How many people are currently ranking, running this venture client uh, factory practice for it, whatever you like? How many startups per year do you typically engage with? Uh, uh, how many scouting sprints or how many uh, challenge based uh, strategic scouting field originated? Uh, scouting you, you you run uh, how many pilots how many pilots turn into industrialization give us some numbers to understand what the flow of activities for a company like bb shanker ballpark yes absolutely so for all the startup activities so this also includes the innovation projects we are um full-time employees we are seven people and then um we have three to four youngsters um, that help us with either the master thesis or interns or working students. Um, so this is basically the team out of global innovation. And then we have the two streams innovation projects and venture client unit. And then um, number of startups that approach us, let's say, um, let's say it in a month because it ups and flows. Um, but we typically have between 10 and 20 startups in a in a month that somehow either get to us or we get a link or they approach us via LinkedIn. Um, so this also like looking at total numbers. So right now we have more than 4,200 um, startups in our innovation platform. Um, here we uh, work with Itonix as our solution provider, where we also have um, yeah displayed our entire innovation process. And um, out of those 4,200 um, startups that are in our innovation platform, we have started more than 150 pilots. Out of those, more than 130 has been actually executed because i mean obviously it's because of us or because of the startup some pilots never made it to execution and out of those 130 um uh, pilots we conducted more than 45 are actually in standard operations and i think this is an indicator um that we can say uh, those startups that are now in standard operations truly make a day-to-day -day impact and more and more branches and countries can just um purchase their services because they're white labeled as suppliers now. So this is pretty cool because also for a startup, once you made it to a pilot and um, the KPIs we set are successful, then you can also scale your services on a global level really, really fast because then again, we have more 120 countries where you can scale your solution to. Um, and then you just asked also about scouting. So you made an important point so substantially looking at your numbers that are probably covering uh, six years of activity so you say we are 4000 uh, 4200 uh, staff that, that in certain way we got in contact with uh, and at the end uh, we tested uh, one one fifty ish and we ended up with 45 50 industrialization so we're talking about one uh, percent so one percent of the start that, that you get in contact with at the end uh, become uh, a potential supplier of innovation for a company like Schenker and start. 
yeah. producing impact inside the organization and making a revenue because that's the goal of the game. So, yeah. so just to give the ratio, that are not that far from the typical ratio of venture capital investment unit. So we're talking about a few percent of the one that you get in contact with, or the one at the end will make something that probably at the end will be able to, to scale up. So that's how the ratio of the innovation economy, and it's important to, to single. What is super important to understand is like what happens to the 1%. So this 45% that started the collaboration journey with a company like Divi Shank, what is the impact, the value that they produce it, and how much they, how larger they will become afterwards. Do you have some, some, some cases, some example? Um, yes, I'm happy to share some. So what's important to know is that before we all agree on conducting a pilot, we set KPIs that are aligned with the startup and also our business or functional units. And so if all of those KPIs are met in midterm and by the end of the uh, pilot, then we try our hardest to also implement it into standard operation. Um, and so now looking at those startups that has really helped us, one really nice example is Avatour, which is at the end of the day, um, a virtual warehousing um, gadget, because it helped us, especially when we had uh, COVID hitting us and we had travel bans and um, yeah, our customers weren't allowed to go into the warehouses anymore due to um, safety reasons. Um, it helped us really, really quickly to um, go ahead and uh, show our customers still the warehouses and they were able to uh, navigate themselves through the virtual reality glasses. So this was um, not only made a really nice um, impact in terms of uh, we were able to fulfill our um, reporting guidelines and uh, measurements, but also it helped the customers to see um, yeah, what's the status quo. And within just one year, this solution has been implemented in more than 29 countries. So so, I mean, obviously, this is the rather easy to implement gadget because it's just an add-on in a warehouse. It's becoming more more complicated when you have to implement and embed it in existing software. But let's just say here, everything that we can use in a warehouse is an add-on. Um, having the scaling in such a short uh, time um, definitely can prove that if the demand and the want is there from the from the business side, then um, there are no limits for globalization. Yeah, well, that's interesting. And I think you say something that is very accurate because at the end we we, we are discussing with many companies like yours and to say, okay, what are the typical time for implementation? I must think this is one of our success stories, right? So uh, I wish oh, I could. Yeah. Say and but the one there is a strong digital component. Uh, I, I, again, going back to the startup economy, digital startup solution typically scale up fast because they are easy. If you go to the deep tech solution, that's something that requires to be more to be more ingrained with production, factories, uh, yeah. logistics. It takes longer. Again, I was discussing with a big. Uh, Korean um, player and say, okay, any pilots that uh, is not touching the, the factory in Seoul, takes a short time to be implemented. But when we start doing things that impact the real factory, manufacturing issues, it takes longer, it may take years. Doesn't mean that it's not worthwhile. And it doesn't mean that it's what work to, to, to be contained, but again, we need also to be, get ready that something has a definitely shorter navigation cycle and something takes longer. And probably in your portfolio, you need to both. Absolutely. And what's important to understand on our end, when we do a pilot, which is for business units, so land transport and ocean freight or uh, contract logistics, we usually have to have a customer on board too. I mean, because all our services are for a company, right? So we have to ensure that we can try out when we want to have different tires on a route because that's that's the latest technologies or when we want to have solar panels on a truck. I mean, first of all, um, Schenker is also pursuing an asset light strategy. So this would even mean we would have to ask our carrier, which is our our supplier to ask, hey, can we try out the solar panels on your truck? And so then actually we are not even the customer anymore, but our carrier would be the customer. The same is true when we want to try out, let's say, autonomous AGVs in the warehouses, then 
we are not, I mean, in order to try it out in a warehouse, we would have to ask our customers for whom we operate this warehouse to ask, hey, can we try out this pilot? It should be increase efficiency. It could, you know, like, and, and tell them why it would be beneficial for them too. But obviously, lots of um, companies would also say, well, just try it out with somebody else. And if it works, come back to us, right? And so that's why we always have to be this mediator, um, trying to also find um, companies that are interested in trying and piloting new startup solutions. Moving the discussion quickly to the KPI side, how do you measure your activity? Yes. So at the end of the day, it all comes down to I'm two numbers. i the, the former consultants. How do you mm -hmm. measure yourself? You say, okay, this has been a good year. This has been a good uh, good performance. How do you measure internally the efficiency and the productivity of a venture client unit? Yes. Bottom line, it goes down to one number. It's the euros you save or the um, euros you generate. Um, yes. but the money is always at the end. And I know, Abato, you also writing on a paper how to measure the success of uh, innovation units, right? So once that's published, I'm curious to read that. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately we're a cost center, but we also want to contribute to the um, to the to the habit of the company. That's for sure. Um, but that's the bottom bottom line. Before that line, obviously there are KPIs on. Um, on various levels, on the operations of our pilots. This is, I would say, the the, the second most important number. Um, this not only inside of the pilot, so like, again, how much money can be saved? How can we increase customer satisfaction? How can we increase employer branding? How can we increase time to market in terms of technology? Like all these KPIs come into place. Um, but then also um, it's important for us to, like for us as a venture client unit, to measure whether or not um, we push the right projects because we only want to push those projects that actually create an impact, right? If we only follow those that are easy, however, have little or no impact, then we also uh, dedicate our resources for, for the wrong. And so it's, it's always an act of balancing. And maybe this is also a shout out to those uh, thinking about going into venture client and going into innovation, innovation. You have to be fine with changing your topics, not every day, but every now and then. So you've been working hardly on a topic and then just just because something else comes around the corner or just because you realize it actually doesn't bring the impact you initially thought, you just have to kill it and uh, find the next you know big thing, um, which is sometimes challenging for, for the team, but also of obviously including me. So. You, you, you mentioned something that I believe uh, is important. Say we are a cost center. And like all the cost center, you require top level buy in because obviously someone say, no, you're doing something that is valuable. But at the same time, if you're able to produce value, you definitely can, uh, let's say, create a sort of internal insurance policy for your own survival. Because again, governance might change, the strategic direction might change, so bad times might happen. So, you know, people might change their mind, but if you're in a large organization. And so that is why it's important to be able to, to show the value that you created. And then the KPI discussion we just had is important to show at the end that's the value that you're the problem is that, as we discussed, there are some projects, innovative projects, some POCs that go into the lot fast and furious and quickly, and you can show some value. But that's something that requires definitely more longer digestion time because they're definitely more close to the core. It's more difficult. And those ones are super relevant, maybe super impactful, but at the end, it's very difficult to measure what, during the navigation. We need to come to the end, and that end might be far, far away. And how do you? How do you manage these different horizons? How you can try to survive showing value, but also producing long-term value? Because again, if you are a corporate venture capital fund, assuming that you are structured as a fund, that is, by the way, is, is just a minority of the corporate venture capital fund that are all around, you say, okay, we have money for five years, we are done, give me the money, I will be coming back in eight years and tell you what you've done. But if you have some of that, else, again, you are competing with the annual budgeting of a, on an annual basis, that's something that is a complicated discussion to have because you need always to show something at the end to nurture the next big things. How do you manage that? Difficult question. You know. 
It is it is a difficult question, and um, I would also say, depending on who you have to report to, you need to have different argumentations at hand. Um, and I mean, maybe this is way too honest, but um, ultimately, I think that's just how we all play this game, right? And um, so I understand, and I think um, ultimately, everybody in innovation. Um, is well guided when you have some numbers um, to prove your point and um, when you can also say um, that you're basically i mean you would never calculate it towards your own unit but when you can say that the projects you have done in the past and here the beauty of us is being already around for since 2016 um, but the point is that we already are able to prove and demonstrate that we created real value and we captured it and now it's an impact. Um, but definitely we need to have people um, in the top management level um, trusting us that we believe um, that we, you know, um, put our time into the right projects. And um, it must also be okay that maybe sometimes um, it was a good project um, until it was not a good project anymore. And um, so this is a little bit of the chaos. Everybody who um, is pushing innovation um, has to deal with. And um, I think it's also part of my job to um, make it as freely as possible for the team and the startups to operate, be the mediator. So if things go wrong, be there and, you know, take it and uh, fight for it, that we can either continue or also um, cancel certain projects. But I think that's just um, part of the job. So I, I can't really say um, how we demonstrate it because it really depends of who. Um, I think the best way is always to demonstrate the value we can create um, and the issue is always depending on the management level that they only plan in 6, 12 or 24 months so and innovation cannot be uh, captured and put down a number in, in this short period of time and that's why um, yeah we have to have a long breath. That's a good point yes and by the way at the end uh, one of the, the common point is working on communication internal communication external communication because despite your job is definitely more, more, more core at the end. Also, the way people perceive it is, is super important. But the fact that you have been working inside the organization since a while, you'll be able to, to reach many people. You are able to show value, to show progress. Uh, that's also yeah. definitely make your life a bit easier. Uh, to ending our conversation, uh, what is your number one uh, learning after the? His years at the helm of um, the venture client unit of DB Schenker, and what is your number one uh, tips for your colleagues? Poof. Uh, number one learning. Um, I have a bunch of learnings for sure. One. Number one learning, I would say. Um, it sounds cheesy, but trust the process. <laughs> so um, <laughs> simply because sometimes I was like, okay, um, you know, there were so many ob obstacles and then I would just always not have like one defined goal, but always push in the right di in the same direction. And because so many little things then added up and then, um, you know, by trusting the process, even though it takes longer in a corporate, I can see that now being there for um, almost two years, I can see that we actually achieve quite a lot. So that's, that's just cool because sometimes it's not fast enough. And sometimes I'm like, Oh my God, this can't be right. Uh, why does it, why do we just push a deadline for another month? Right. We could just push it for two days, but no, because we are, um, we are a, a slow paced, uh, big corporation. Sometimes things are going really slow, but you know what? Once they are at the point where you start, you have such tremendous power because you have this big ship. And once it's rolling, you get all the help from so many colleagues. And then all of a sudden it actually became way better than you initially thought because you get all this help from, from different uh, people involved and excited about it. And um, that's why I'm saying it's cheesy, but I like it, trust the process. <laughs> also because you're coming from consultants and you contributed to design. So yeah. We are definitely more comfortable about the process. 
Yes, and the thing, uh, the second question was about what do I want to share with uh, colleagues in the in the field industry would be, um, I could also say trust the process, but uh, let's let's something else. Um, here, I would say, um, I sure can say that I wake up and say, okay, with the job I currently have, I can contribute to the value creation of Schenker, I can contribute to the value creation of startups, um, brackets, society, and then also to to some investor in economy landscape. And so um, I think this is a really good job um, for all three stakeholders and it creates value that can last. And so um, if you're still in doubt, if your company should have a venture client unit or not, um, then I was, I'm hoping, um, yeah, join the venture client community and we're happy to Get you onboarded. Oh, definitely. Yes, I believe that uh, people like you are definitely helping the company you work for to to do the most important thing that is surviving because innovation meaning su survival, and it's something most of the company try to to forget. And uh, bringing startups to to bring value into a corporate of your size, you are bringing them startup to the to the scale up phase, and you are contributing to new uh, gross uh, domestic product generation, headcount, uh, employment, and societal value. So I think your job is super important. Like everything that relates to open innovation is so difficult to measure, so difficult to perceive that sometimes it's good to, to be reassured by someone is actually is doing that you have the perception that you are moving the dent, that you're making something that has a value as an impact. So congratulations for uh, the work you've been doing. We'll definitely stay in touch to, to, to monitor progress. Uh, all the best for your PhD research. Because again, all of us is pivoting, uh, I would say, almost every day, or if not all every day, every week. So I think this is an important topic to definitely to be deep dive. And uh, let's talk soon. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.